Leading economists predict America's age will end in five years. The International Monetary Fund forecasts that after more than a century, as the world's largest economy, the U.S., will be usurped by China as early as 2016. Artis Kellen Ford looks at the suns definitely rising in the east. When China wakes, it will shake the world, so said Napoleon two centuries ago. But American politicians and economists thought they would have a little more time to hit the snooze button. 20 years ago, Francis Fukuyama declared that economic and political liberalism was the end of history. Liberal democracy is really all there is now. The final and most advanced stage of societal development. What I was referring to was really the growth of a kind of universal consensus on the you know, the justice, justness or the rightness of the principles of liberal democracy, that that was really the remarkable uh, fact about our world. Today, the world looks much different. Just 10 years ago, the U.S. economy was three times the size of China's. But new data released by the International Monetary Fund shows the Chinese overtaking the U.S. by 2016. That's just five years. China is a authoritarian, uh, but you know, half capitalist country growing like gangbusters. Uh, they can do all these big infrastructure projects very efficiently, high speed rail, uh, airports. Typical comparisons of the U.S. and Chinese economy use currency as their basis. But using purchasing power parity, the IMF says that the Chinese economy will grow $7.8 trillion over the next five years. The U.S. economy, on the other hand, will only grow $3.6 trillion. This leading to the lowest world economic output by the United States in its history, just 17.7%. And some economists say 2016 is a conservative estimate. In real, in more realistic terms, China will pass us up a little bit sooner than that. But that's only five years. And I think this has huge implications. And that it's those neoliberal policies, such as deregulation and tax breaks for big corporations, that have created a huge wealth gap in the U.S. and held American development. Back. This uh, doctrine that uh, you need to liberalize and open up and privatize your economy, uh, your economy to the maximum extent, I mean, it has done huge damages. And they say that China's rise flies in the face of Fukuyama's theory. China is definitely a refutation of the idea that neoliberal uh, economics is what works. I mean, here is an economy where the state controls not only the banking system, but most of the large uh, corporations, they control investment, which is uh, you know, twice as much as a percentage of GDP as it is in the United States. And uh, it's the fastest growing economy in, in, in the history of the world. An economy that has lifted 300 million Chinese out of poverty, while the number of Americans living in poverty increased from 31.1 million to 43.6 million in just the last 10 years. So would Fukuyama revise his theory? It's hard to say. Uh, I, I still will bet on a system with checks and balances over a, you know, even a good quality authoritarian system. Kaelin Ford, RT, Washington, D.C. For some foreign policy watchers, it's not as though America doesn't have the money. It's the world's biggest military spender. And as analysts tell RT, other nations are being much cleverer with their, their cash. I'll give you a stark example. The war in Iraq may have cost more than a trillion dollars, perhaps two trillion dollars. What did the U.S. accomplish except a string of bases all over Iraq? Absolutely nothing, because the oil, most of the contracts will be exploited by Russian, Chinese, Malaysian, Japanese companies. Only ExxonMobil got a huge chunk of a contract uh, in Iraq. What did China do? They went to the Turkmenistan government, they built a, pi a gas pipeline from Turkmenistan to Western China, and without spending a single Pentagon cent in a war, they get, they're going to get at least 30% of all the gas they need directly. So this proves to you uh, the difference between a full-spectrum dominance, Pentagon-oriented, Cold War mentality model, and the state development model by the Chinese.